So what if you had, for example, 25 times z squared minus 1? And I say factor using the difference of two squares. You're going to say, well, wait a minute, I don't, I don't see two squares here. But don't forget, 5 times 5 is 25. z times z is c, z squared. So this is 5z squared. Then I have a minus sign. Well, 1 is a perfect square. 1 times 1 is 1. So this is 1 squared. So see, now you have... Uh, the difference of two things that are squares. So the way you factor it is, it's very simple. 5z, the first term, without using the square, plus 1. 5z minus 1. That's it. It's just the first term plus the second term, first term minus the second term. That's it. And I encourage you to use FOIL to go and multiply everything out. And you'll see that these interior terms, when you multiply them, will cancel. And so you'll be left with this, which is exactly what you should be left with. So you should always check your work. Second problem, 49a squared minus 9b squared. And you ask yourself, do I have a perfect square in each term? Well, 7 times 7 is 49. So this will be 7a squared is going to give me this. And then there's a minus sign. Now, 3 times 3 is 9. So we have 3. Don't forget the b. It has to be squared because, you know, this will go in and touch each one of these guys, giving me this. So this is exactly what this is. It's the difference of two squares. So you just take the first term plus the second term, and then the first term minus the second term. So it's 7a plus 3b, 7a minus 3b. That's the final answer. I encourage you to cross multiply all of that out and double check. And what you're going to get is exactly what you started with. This is what we call the factored form using the difference of two squares. All right, next problem. What if we have u to the fourth power minus 81 times v to the fourth power? Again, doesn't look like I have any kind of, of um, anything obvious here. But u to the fourth, don't forget, can be written as u squared squared, right? Because remember, if we multiply this exponent in, 2 times 2 is going to give us 4. So this is exactly equal to this. Then we have a minus sign. 9 times 9 is 81, so we'll have 9v squared, and that will be squared. So we're also using our rules of exponents that we have studied for so long. If you go backwards, this would be 9 squared, and then v to the fourth power, because I'd multiply them. So this is the difference of two squares. So the rule is very simple to follow once you nail that down. u squared plus 9v squared u squared minus 9v squared. All you do is you look in outside of this other exponent. You don't look at that. It's this term plus this term and this term minus this term, which is exactly what I've written down. Now, you could write this down, but then you notice further. Here is a square term, and here is another perfect square term because this obviously is u squared, and this can be written as 3v squared. Make sure you understand that. And of course, there's a minus sign between them. So this is another, even after you've done this, this in your answer is another difference of two squares. So I can rewrite this to be even simpler. So the final answer is really going to be u squared plus 9v squared. That's just the first term. Then uh, it's going to be this plus this, u squared plus 3v, and then it'll be, oh, not u squared, sorry. Let me erase that. It's going to be u plus 3v, u minus 3v. Because when you do you know, first term plus second term, it's not the square part. It's the, just the base part, plus the second base, and then this base minus the second base. That's what the rule has been all along. So it's u plus 3v, u minus 3v, and then, of course, you have this. Now, this, you might think, oh, this is another difference of two squares. Well, this is a square term, and this is a square term, correct, but there's, there's a plus sign here. It has to be the difference of two squares. It means subtraction. There has to be a minus in here. If it's this with a plus sign, this rule does not apply at all, and you, you can't really do anything further with this. So we just circle that. That's our final answer. All right. Now, what if I say, hey, go ahead and factor this. Let me write this down. 5 times x cubed minus 20x. And I say, hey, go ahead and factor this. I don't really tell you if you're supposed to use the difference of two squares or not. Well, you're getting to the point in algebra. You know, you're getting to the point in your, in your algebra, you know, uh, knowledge where <clears throat> you should start to know kind of what's legal and what's not. So even if I, 
even if you don't see a difference of two squares here, which I don't, I don't see any difference of two squares here, I also know that I can pull a 5 out of both of these terms, and I can pull an x out of both of these terms, because x is common to both as the greatest common factor. So let's do that first. Sometimes you'll be told to factor something, and you'll just do that first. So 5x. I know I can pull the 5x out. What's going to go on the inside here? This times something is going to give you this. The 5 is already in place, so all I'll need is the x squared in there. The minus will come from this minus. Now 5x times what is going to give me 20x? So 5 times 4 is 20, and the x uh, is taken care of from here. So this should be, you should un understand that this is factoring out 5x from that expression. This is exactly right. Distribute it in, you get this. And I say, well, wait a minute, I'm, I'm not done, because this is a difference of two squares. Because this is written, obviously this is x squared, and this is 2 squared. So that's a difference of two, of two squares. So I can further simplify this by saying 5x, and then it's just going to be x plus 2, x minus 2. This is the fully factored version, 5x and then x plus 2, x minus 2. So sometimes you're going to be given problems where you, it doesn't really even look like a difference of two squares, but once you do an initial factor, then you'll see, oh wait, there's some perfect squares in there and you can make it even simpler. So the goal with this is always to get it as simple as you can. So u times v cubed minus u cubed times v. Again, I don't see any difference of two squares here. I mean, I see lots of cubes, I see a minus sign. But what I do see is that I have a single u here and three of them there, so I know I can pull out one u. And I have three v's here and only one there, so I can pull out a single v. Then I try to figure out what goes on the inside here. So if I multiply this by something to get u is already there, so I don't have to add any u's, but I need a v cubed, so I'm going to have to have a v squared in here. And then there's a minus sign. And then same thing here. I'm looking what this times what is going to give me this. So u times u squared is going to give me u cubed. Right? I don't need any v's there because the v is multiplied in to give me this. So you should convince yourself that this times this gives you this, and this times this gives you this. But then you notice, wait a minute, now I do have a difference of two squares. So the way that you continue along is u times v, and then it's just going to be v plus u, v minus u. And let me just double check, uv, uh, v plus u, and then... And so that's what you have. And you can always go backwards to verify. If you multiply this times this, you'll get the v squared. The last terms, u times u, will give you the u squared with a negative. The interior terms will be uv and negative uv. Those will cancel out. So multiplying these together gives me this. And I already verified that multiplying these gives us this. So therefore, this last quantity is equal to what I started with. And that's all you're trying to do when you factor. Now, I know it doesn't look any simpler. Sometimes factoring doesn't really look simpler. But it is what you're trying to do, because you have to factor, for instance, to solve equations later on. You'll need to factor lots and lots of things, uh, in many cases, to solve an equation. All right, next problem. We just have a couple more here. None of them are hard, um, but they will get a little more challenging. What if I had x plus 4 squared minus x squared? And I was told to go ahead and factor that. Well. You notice here I have a big term that's squared, and here I have an x that's squared. So sometimes difference of two squares can look like this sometimes. All that matters is I have a, a term, and only one term, that is squared. And here I have something else that's squared, and there's subtracted. Just because I have something inside the parentheses doesn't matter. The entire quantity is squared, so I just treat this as the first item that's squared, and then this guy is squared. So the way that you would write it down is it's going to be... Um, well, just to make it clear, let me do it like this. It'll be x plus 4, that's the first term, plus x, and then it'll be x plus 4 minus x. It's exactly the same pattern that we've been doing all the time. It's this plus this, and then this minus this. It's just that this first term is bigger now, so it's this plus x, and then this minus x. So you see the same rules follow. Now, we can actually simplify this a little bit. Let me just drop the parentheses. There's no reason to have them there anymore. I just kind of kept them to, to, to be clear with what I was doing. Here you have x plus 4 plus x, and here you have x plus 4 minus x. So really what you have in the first term uh, over here is you have x plus x gives you 2x plus 4. Now in the second term, 
this x can cancels with this negative x. They subtract out and give you zero. So really all you have in the second term is just simply a four. And now, well, let me switch that out. Now let me rewrite the whole thing again. All right, so what I have here is two x plus four, and then I just have four, like this. Now the four can be distributed in like this, so really what I have is two times four is eight x, plus 16, just distributing in. It's the four times this gives me eight x, four times four gives me 16. That's the final answer, and that's the factored form of everything. Now, you can also look at this and say, well, this is my final answer. However, look, I've got an eight here, and I've got a 16 here, and I know that I can pull out an eight, so I can factor this even further. So this will be x plus, what do you think goes here? Eight times two is 16. This is really the final answer. This is the final factored form of it. And you kind of have to go through some hoops to get there, but basically this is a difference of two squares, and once you get that, I simplified inside of them, giving me this and this. I distributed in, giving me this, and then I realized, wait a minute, I can pull the eight out. This is the final factored form uh, for all of it. All right, now we have one last final problem with difference of two squares. We have s plus two squared minus s minus two squared. Now again, do you have a difference of two squares? Well, you have one term squared, another big term squared, and they're subtracted. So they, they are a difference of two, two things that are squared. So you could just apply the rule straight away. This will be the first term plus this term, and then in the next thing will be this term minus this thing. So you just have to be careful to get the signs right. And we're also going to use brackets here to make sure that we're doing things right. So it's the first term, s plus 2, plus the second thing, s minus 2, now let me close that and open up a new one, and then it'll be s plus 2 minus s minus 2. Now notice that I did a couple things here. I used brackets because I didn't want to drop these parentheses right away because I want to be able to go back and see what I was doing. This first term plus the second one, this first term minus the second one. Also, later, whenever I expand all this stuff, this negative is going to distribute in. So if you drop the parentheses too early, you're going to get the wrong answer. You should write all of your steps down. Now, under here, uh, let me just go ahead and just re drop the parentheses, essentially, is all I'm going to do. S plus 2 plus S minus 2. I could have done the math there, but I'd really just drop it and take it one step at a time. Here I have S plus 2, but I have to be careful. Negative times S gives me negative S, and negative times negative 2 gives me positive 2. You know, don't forget, when you have this times negative 2, it becomes positive. So now I can simplify inside of both of these things. So here s plus s gives me 2s, but 2 minus 2 is 0, so that basically subtracts away. So I'm going to close this off. Inside of here, I have s and I have negative s. That's going to subtract a 0, and then I ask 2 plus 2 is 4, which is right that, so that's all that's left there. Now I can just multiply these, and I'll get 2 times 4 is 8 times s, and that's the final answer, 8s. So difference of two squares is one of those things that Either your problem is going to just jump out at you that you have a difference of two squares, or your test might say factor this using the difference of two squares. Or, like in the case of some of these other problems up above, you may not realize that it's a difference of two squares right away. You might just say, it might just say factor, and you say, okay, well I can pull out a 5x, no problem. Then you notice, wait a minute, this is the difference of two squares, so I can factor that further. Sometimes the problem will be like that. So make sure you can solve every one of these, and uh, then this skill will be another you know, tool in your tool bag, and then follow me on to the next lesson. We'll continue talking about all of these really important core topics in algebra. Learn anything at mathandscience.com.